Vivo is back with a brand new mid-range smartphone, the V21 5G. But this isn't just another mid-range smartphone because it offers something different, particularly when it comes to that front-facing selfie camera. But is it any good? Well, let's find out in this review here on MQuan Reviews. is the brand new Vivo V21 5G. We'll talk more about that in a moment. Can we just take a moment to appreciate all the goodies that for a mid-range smartphone come included in the box? And I'm talking about a SIM ejector tool, some paperwork. You also get this nice see-through silicon case that helps keep it protected. You get a 33 watt fast charger, which has flash charge 2.0. And then that has the cable with it, which is a USB-C to USB standard. And then we get a three and a half half millimeter headphone uh, setup over here. Vivo have included this nice little accessory that allows you to add that three and a half millimeter headphone jack to the USB-C. So taking a closer look at the Vivo V21 5G, you'll notice, first of all, that striking color. If you can't decide which color to go with, go with this because you get pretty much every color all rolled up into one. Now, in the hand, it does feel quite light and it also feels quite thin. Um, you do have a plastic back and a plastic middle frame, and I think that helps to make it feel lighter and thinner in the hand. It doesn't take away from the premium build, even though it do has majority plastic here, it doesn't feel uh, cheap at all. It actually feels quite premium in the hand. Now down at the bottom, you'll notice you've got a dual SIM tray over there next to a USB-C port, and then outward firing single speakers. This is probably the first thing that I would have liked to improve on this device. Uh, they're decent speakers, but unless you hold it in a particular way, it will sound muted in your hand when you're consuming media or playing games. So something to be aware of over there. And then on the right hand side, we have the power button just below the volume rocker. The left hand side is pretty flush and the top is flush as well. Now at the back, you have that triple camera setup, which I'll talk more about in a moment. And on the front here, you have this beautiful 6.44 inch AMOLED display. It's a really nice display with a drop down uh, tier notch for the front facing camera. But overall, it does feel very, very nice in the hand. One of the other things about the display is the quality when you're consuming media, when you're playing games, all of that good stuff day to day, feels very, very nice. There are a couple of other updates. Number one, that display does support 90 Hertz refresh. Now for security and biometrics under the display, you also have a fingerprint scanner, which is easy to set up and use daily, but I found that the front facing camera to unlock was a faster option. Now the Vivo V21 5G is powered by Android 11 with FunTouch OS version 11.1. Now compared with previous iterations, it isn't as heavy, so it is cleaner now, smoother overall. There is still some bloatware apps that are included, but I think there are a ton of different customizations and personalizations, particularly with themes and other elements to the OS experience that will have benefits if that's something that you're looking for. I also like how there are also updates to the gaming experience to get you the most from that. This is powered by eight gigabytes of RAM with the inclusion of extended RAM where you get essentially, if you've got sufficient storage space, three additional GB of RAM added into that mix uh, to give you a smoother system experience. This is also with 128 gigabytes of storage, and this is powered by the MediaTek Dimensity 800U chipset. Overall, not necessarily a performance element chipset, more on a power saving element. So gaming and day-to-day -day multitasking use with this chipset is reasonable, not the best, not the fastest, but it is gonna conserve on battery life. Talking of battery life, this comes with a 4,000 milliamp hour battery, which is pretty decent, it's okay, it could be more. But what I found with my day-to-day -day use, uh, testing this out, I was using mostly social media, a bit of light gaming, and obviously testing the camera with the videography and photography, I was getting round about a day's worth of views, which I think is pretty decent. Now, I think the combination of the chipset with the OS will help you preserve on battery life. And I was surprised even with 90 Hertz, I was getting decent battery life. But I think right out of the box, again, for a mid-range smartphone, that 33 watt fast charger will give you plenty of juice when you do need to top this up. 
half an hour for me was giving me around about 55% worth of charge, but from zero to 100%, it took me about an hour and 10 minutes, which I think, again, is pretty decent. Now, at the beginning of this video, I mentioned one of the standout points on the Vivo V21 is the front-facing camera. I'll talk about that in a moment, but as far as the rear camera is concerned, you get a decent setup. It's a triple camera made up of a 64 megapixel f1.8 with OIS. This is the main sensor, if you like. That's paired up with an 8 megapixel f2.2 for the ultra-wide and then a 2 megapixel f2.4 for the macro. Now, as far as camera Capability is concerned, it takes pretty decent shots, both in normal lighting with the ultra wide going all the way through the various focal lengths. It has a maximum zoom length, if you like, of 10x. But what I found was really anything after about 5x became very difficult to kind of use, quite blurry, and there's a lot of noise there. But the ultra wide and the 1x, 2x does perform very well. You get good contrast color saturation and also color accuracy as well. So macro on this isn't really anything to shout about. It does what it's meant to do. Now when it comes to portrait, that's a little more different. With the rear triple camera setup, portrait shots are pretty decent and you do get good differentiation between the subject and the background or that bokeh kind of effect. Now when it comes to low light performance, what you'll notice here is that there is a designated night mode and the night mode does take a couple of seconds to take those shots, but what you will find when you compare them with the standard photos taken is that the night mode shots do perform better overall. There's just a bit more punch from the software element to those images, there's more clarity and certainly more detail. Now moving to the front, this is where the most interesting update on the V21 is taking place, and that is because Vivo have incorporated a selfie camera with a 44 megapixel f2.0, but check this, it has autofocus and it's pretty cool because it can track either automatically or track to one of your eyes and it also comes with optical image stabilization and what they've done is quite cleverly use something called MEMS or Micro Electro Mechanical System and this incorporates the gyroscopes to detect motion and calibrates the camera. Now there are also a couple of other updates when it comes to the selfie capabilities and that is the inclusion of something called Spotlight. In situations where you might want to vlog in the dark, this is without Spotlight and this is with. Hopefully you should see more of my face now. Sorry. <laughs> this is recording in 4K and uh, it's that 44 megapixel with the OIS and autofocus. It's a really cool feature where you can actually set up the autofocus to be automatic or lock on to one eye and it does a very, very good job at that. Now, as I pan around, you can see what the stabilization is like. It's not got that super anti-shake mode that you have with the rear camera, but still, I think it does an excellent job. Overall, video is pretty decent on the rear camera. Uh, I feel it does a good job in terms of color saturation, color accuracy as well, especially as I move around. Uh, let me know in the comment section down below what you think and also what you think of the audio. Hopefully, you should be able to hear some of the birds around me. Right, let's turn on now Super Anti-Shake and compare it with this. So this is Super Anti-Shake turned on now. And as I walk around and pan around, you should get an idea of just how well this does in terms of stabilization. I think uh, the software side is really good, particularly as I'm walking around. I mean, it's very, very difficult to even tell that I'm walking around. It feels like I'm on a gimbal. So I think this is doing what it's meant to be doing. In summary, there are a lot of mid-range smartphones that are out there on the market at the moment, but I think what separates the Vivo V21 differently from many of those is when it comes to that front-facing selfie camera. Vivo have certainly paid attention to that. And if that's something that you're looking for, particularly with 4K, particularly for selfies, then this is certainly worth considering. I think all those other elements, the fact that it's 5G ready, I think the uh, form factor, the display with that 90 hertz, and again, coming back to that mid-range price point for this device, uh, the Vivo V21 is certainly a device worth considering. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. And if you've enjoyed this video, please do smash that subscribe button, hit like, and check out this other video over here. I'll see you over there next.